This is Ted Flood of Golden Skate, and I'm here at the Toronto Cricket and Skate Cricket and Curling or Cricket and Cricket skating? Skating, skating cur <laughs> Toronto Cricket Skating and Curling Club. That that's where we are. <laughs> you confuse me. I don't even I'm know where I'm club. Yeah, where are you? Where do you train? <laughs> and I'm thrilled and stoked to be joined by uh, Luba Ilyashashkina and Dylan Moskovich, well uh, Paris team from Canada. Great to have you and and chat with you. First key question. My editor, Paula Slater, has given me some input that I should be dressed a bit more fancy pants for these interviews. Oh, therefore, you look very nice. Therefore the blazer, therefore the pocket square. You you're even ironed my shirt. Oh, well, you beat me then. I, However. I just threw it on. Okay, well, here's my thought. You know, I, you know, I have a propensity for more plaid, really casual, which I think if I'm casual and relaxed, then it makes the skaters feel more relaxed. You end up, you know, spilling more dish and words that you might expect. I walk away with a great story. See, I think I think what you've gone with here is still as casual, but it's on the stylish side. All right. And you know, for us, we're like dressed in super fancy, sparkly outfits. So this is casual, regardless. All right, fair. <laughs> you're not helping me. You're not helping me. I, all I'm <laughs> saying is casual. All I'm saying is we feel comfortable, so you're good. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay. Coming off an amazing season, you guys. So bronze medal at Skate Canada, bronze medal at Four Continents Championships top-ranked Canadian pair at the World Championships, personal best scores across the board, join the stars on IceCast. I mean, when you look back to when you formed three years ago, did you expect that this kind of momentum would, would start to build? Did you, are, did you, were you sensing that right out of the gate? Uh, I think uh, we kind of have our expectations and our goals, and we are moving towards them. Of course, our ambitions are pretty high, and we're, this is a, uh, our progress that's how we move we're moving forward and at the same time there are a lot of things are achieved but we know how much we could put out how much more we could put out there yeah i think i think we recognize the potential right from the beginning it's one of the reasons you know we did it luba moved across the world and i started a new partnership at almost 30 so i don't think we either of us would have done it had we not seen a large amount of potential for yep. the two of us so it wasn't shocking, but it's exciting. You know, Ooh. it's nice to see that our hard work and the time we put in over the three years um, has started to pay off, and uh, we're on track to, to kind of getting to where we want to get to. Mm -hmm. So coming off the momentum of last season, bring us up to speed now. How, you know, how is the off-season training going? How did Stars on Ice sort of mix into, you know, your original plan for how you'd spend the summer? Uh, after... A world championship, we came back to Canada and we had a f two weeks, I think, two weeks in here. We started doing our long program mm -hmm. and we choreographed the show number for stars. And then we were gone for the stars tour, which was very excited. Um, Dylan and I were super happy to be around all the best skaters in the world and uh, being not just with them, but skating, actually, actually skating with them. Mm -hmm. It gave me personally a lot of experience of being around people and doing a lot of public stuff, and in particular in skating, to stay in formation <laughs> with all the people, because, yeah, I... A little bit of synchro, synchro training. Right. Yeah, I'm... Um, I think it was also nice, sorry to interrupt, but I, I think it was also nice for you to see a lot more of the country that you hadn't seen. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. There's a lot of parts in Canada Traveling that Luba had an country. experience. So, right. what were some of the highlights for you? Um, Victoria, uh, Vancouver. Beautiful. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think two of those were mostly like about the city mm -hmm. uh, that I like the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, well, I mean, <laughs> except all the places that I've already been to. Right. Right. And so, have you seen like how much of Canada do you think you've seen since you've since you've arrived and since you started touring and, and so forth? Um, I think I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> probably more than the average Canadian. Yeah, probably, yeah, probably. Excellent. What did Stars on, I mean, a lot of skaters say that Stars on Ice and just that repeated night after night skating in front of an audience can really impact and shape a person's level of performance and connection with the audience. Did you find that? Um, or do you sort of get into the zone of this is your choreography and you execute it? Uh, I think, well, you know, it's 12 shows, right? Which is almost double the amount of competitions you'll do in a season. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's a lot of experience shoved into a small amount of time, which is great. And like Luba said, we're, we're on tour with some of the best ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot that can be learned. And 
um, the camaraderie and you know the the family feeling that you get from being on tour with everybody. You get more comfortable in your skin. You get more comfortable being out there in front of everybody, and um, it really isn't. It's a nice experience to be able to to skate without the pressure of competition, without the pressure of judges, and having to pay attention to levels and this and that. And it's just purely for the performance and entertainment aspect of skating. And uh, I think we both really valued that and um, appreciated that opportunity for um, those aspects in particular. Mm -hmm. Coming off the World Championships where two Canadian women arrived, you know, landed on the podium, which is unprecedented, and Canada has struggled for many years in, in women's skating. We've had some great, you know, exceptions to that, Joanny Rochette and others. Did, was what dynamic was that like? Was that I mean, it's just not, Canada's just not known for necessarily really strong blockbuster women, and now we have two. Did that change the dynamic? Was that interesting to observe? Any insights there? Um, I mean, you know what? They're both young, mm -hmm. and they're both firecrackers. Like they they really have a presence on the ice, and the dynamic with the tour cast was interesting because of the age range was so humongous, but. I don't know, it was really interesting. It was cool. Gabby and Caitlin were both phenomenal on tour. They did a fantastic job. Gabby, unfortunately, got sick at the end. But, yeah, I think I think this year's cast was pretty great. We all complimented each other really nicely, and it was fun. Like We had a great time. Right. You talk about the age range. Were you kind of like dad? Like, hey, guys, it's... You know, t the show's over. Time, yeah, but you know what? I'm always, I'm always the oldest on the national team. So it was nice having like Jeff and Kurt and Elvis. I'm like, oh, right, all right. I'm kind of like middle of the back right now. Right. You're like a young spring. Chicken. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. bizarre. <laughs> so talk to me. I, I recall distinctly at the Canadian Championships, um, coming out of both the short and the long program, Luba, you looked particularly displeased with how the jumps went there. You still managed a silver medal. But then really turned things around and gritted through getting you know the necessary rotations at the Four Continents Championships and the World Championships. What what did you need to do to get yourself in that mindset to execute those jumps and get them done, and at least attempt them? Um, the more I try, the more I think, the more I want to accomplish the element, the worse it gets. And it's okay. like a conscious effort for myself to not to try too hard and not to care too much. It's hard to say and hard to do, not to care about the most important thing in your life, but that's what it. Uh, that's what works, mm -hmm. and I, I've proven to myself many times that this is the key. Right. So I'm concentrating on that. Mm -hmm. I was concentrating, and I keep concentrating on that. So is is it easy to over concentrate to to yeah. the jumps oh, yeah. become the yeah. centerpiece? Oh, yeah. Of yeah. For me, yeah, that I, I tend to overthink and over analyze. Mm -hmm. I think. I mean. I think it's something that is what makes skating hard in general. Sure. You know, it's it's a, a fast moving sport. There's a lot of moving parts, but it's also very technical. So things can go wrong in a split second. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one of the things that makes it hard is you have to emote. You have to be in the program. You have to push. You have to work hard, and at the same time, you have to be able to let go and use your technique. So right. it, it's definitely a tricky aspect of the sport mm -hmm. and. Uh, that's something we've been working on, um, fine-tuning for ourselves as, as individual skaters and, and as a team. Right. Um, Luba, Dylan is such a consistent, solid jumper and has been for a long time. Is that motivating or can that sometimes get a bit discouraging? It's like, why does he keep landing this and, <laughs> and it's a struggle for me? At least that's what, that's what we see. If all we know in practice, Dylan is falling constantly. I'm not sure. but. <laughs> um. Well, it's definitely a great skill, and um, for me to feel confident that I, I'm not worried that he's going to land everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. But <laughs> yesterday, oh, no, do you mind if I'll... Okay, yesterday, our second session, we're going <laughs> to do the show program, and uh, like, second session, we're already done, we've already done one, mm -hmm. and Dylan said, okay, I'm ready for a triple toe, you warm up. <laughs> I got, I got... I like poking her. Challenged, <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you, like, giving me a challenge? I'm taking it. I'm taking off my jacket. I'm ready for a triple toe. No warm up, nothing. And we go, and I do it, and Dylan misses it. <laughs> there we go, yes! I was so she was so, she was so excited. I was yeah. like... <laughs> Good job. Congratulations. Awesome. I tried to play it off like I did it on purpose, but right, she didn't right, buy it. Right. 
<laughs> Excellent. It's like, yes, my partner failed. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more like I did the challenge and yeah, you sure. did it. Yeah. Uh, totally. So in, in terms of coming up with choreography, I would imagine that, I mean, you did say you're, you know, a slightly more mature skater than, than the typical. And I would imagine as you sort of become more comfortable in your age, you probably have a better sense of what you like and what you don't like. Is it hard to agree on music, costumes, choreography? Which one of you is more likely to say, no way, I'm not, I don't want to skate to that? Uh, we kind of all decide, decide all together with... Uh, Dylan and I and all our coaches and choreographers mm -hmm. about the music choices and about the outfits and, and our designer also. Yeah, I, I don't think there's ever been an idea put forward that all of us were like, any of us were like, absolutely not. Really? Um, okay. We're all pretty open-minded and I mean, Luba comes from a very different background and style of training in Russia and um, so right from day one it's been a learning process for her to try and uh, kind of adapt to the Canadian style of skating and our our philosophy on choreography and telling a story and the way we approach it. And I'm a very open-minded person and I like to further myself in any way I can. So if there's a new style that I get to try, I'm all for it. Right, right. Um, I don't I don't really like to pigeonhole myself into just what I can do. I mm -hmm. like to try and branch out and challenge myself and explore different areas. But I, I really like the the process of developing um, the choreography, developing the mood, the character, the story. I, I find it very interesting. I'm kind of interested in acting too, so that aspect for me is, is fun. Yeah. So I, I like that development and something new is always a fun thing for me. So when you talk about the difference between the Russian approach to skating and choreography, can you, can you be more specific? Like what, what, what does that look like? What, what, what adaptation did you have to take on when you came to Canada? To sort of to work with the team. In uh, Russian way of thinking, it's more classical. It's based more on the ballet moves, mm -hmm. and Canadian style is more like everyday life. What whatever you do every day, you do the same kind of thing on uh, on the ice. Okay. And for me, it was tricky because on the ice, for me, it was something very specific in this in the own in its own zone, and when I started thinking more out of the box that's what was kind of tricky for me and then okay. and it was an adjustment okay interesting so when we see skaters for example like um uh, stobova and klimov who have in the past couple of years gone down a, a very different path in terms of more modern and contemporary and different shapes and forms and silhouettes than we're accustomed to w do you think that they would have had to really challenge the russian approach or do you think that's still consistent with it I know that right now more and more Russian skaters are using international choreographers, mm -hmm. so uh, they are starting coming uh, out of the this particular style. But I think it's partially still more like Russian style. I think it's also each team has their own look, right? Yeah, that's true. And, sure. and that's some true. some Russian teams have that Gordieva and Grinkov style that's very classic, timeless, and. They connect well and their lines are exquisite and really you could play any piece of music and you still love watching them. Mm -hmm. But then there's others that are more power based and they're more dynamic and you have to be a little more creative in giving them new vehicles that will kind of keep them fresh and unique. Sure. So I think even within the Russian framework, yeah. there's different ways to approach sure. it. Yeah. Sure. So from my view as, as a viewer, your short program last year looked like quite a departure from not that you have a typical style, but a, quite a departure where Luba was r really intense, fiery, dynamic. It, you know, it was exciting. Was that easy to adopt, or did that, did <laughs> that take a while? It was made to for me. Yes, it was made this for program, you. That was, yeah. that was like that was agreed that this is Luba's short program. Okay. Yeah. She, <laughs> and what, I that? love tango so much, mm -hmm. all kinds of tango. And so when our choreographer, David Wilson, said that this year we're going to do tango, I was already happy. I didn't need to listen to the music. I was already happy. Right, right. And so did that, did that character come quite naturally for you? Yeah, okay. very easy. That's, that's me. There, there wasn't much um, coercion needed in terms okay. of bringing that right, aspect right, right. out of her. So how hard was it then to shift from that approach to a much softer, more romantic vlog program last year? Um... It also came kind of natural. I don't. I don't think that we. Needed I think yeah. I think I think that's more 
our style together. That's like okay. kind of something that we picked up pretty easily is being able to communicate and connect on the ice. So mm -hmm. I don't think it was a huge adjustment, like, oh, we have to change gears. Right. The tango was like very natural for Luba because it's something she's dreamt of doing her whole career. Mm -hmm. The soft romantic side is kind of our go-to. So okay. both kind of came out pretty naturally. Right, right. In particularly in the long program, the positions you achieved in your lifts and on Stars on Ice were unbelievable. Like, what kind of flexibility training do you have to do to, to set those positions when you're in the air? Uh, do you just pretzel <laughs> yourself constantly, or what is what Well, is I happening? work... She sleeps like that. I, <laughs> I sleep like that naturally. <laughs> Are you joking? Yeah. You're joking. No, well, no, like She sleeps all contorted. It's, I've seen her sleeping on a couch before. I'm like, I would never be able to walk after <laughs> that. There's no way I could ever skate after right. sleeping like that for right. five minutes. Okay, so it comes kind of naturally. But sorry, you, 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 so you, I guess you train, you must train this on a regular basis. Oh, well, yeah, I keep keep it in shape. and um, But my back is uh, natural. Mm -hmm. And everything else I've developed myself. So mm -hmm. I'm still working on all the stretching and splits, uh, but my lower spine is natural. Okay. And everything else I keep, <laughs> keep in shape. Yeah. When you're working on lifts and you've got, you know, Dylan holding you and the torque and the pressure, are there ever times when you overdo it and you're like, no, that's not going to work or you have to work as perfect yeah, of course. to the air flexibility yeah, more? Yeah. Does I mean, it happen often? Are you trying to push yourself quite a bit, quite often? Um... I know that I need to hit the position when I'm up in the air and and just hold it because even if I want to go further and I know that I have more range, any adjustments are tricky for Dylan right. because he's on the bottom and he has to keep the balance. Sure, sure. And what is that like for you? I mean, you're probably used to certain positions. It was, the gonna take. <laughs> it was an adjustment at first, like our, our tryout, she's like... Can I do your impression? Well, do my impression. <laughs> Lifting me over your head and hold. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, sure. So I pick her up and then her feet are here and all of a sudden her face is beside my face. And I'm like, what? <laughs> is going like, it took me a good right. solid year to even understand what was happening above me because mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of n not the standard lift position that you'll encounter. Yeah. So, and it is true. Sometimes, you know, Luba likes to really sell her lift positions and sometimes because she's so flexible and yeah. she's got a lot of energy she can go too far and all of a sudden the whole lift changes and because it's such a unique kind of position mm -hmm. finding the balance took us time well i'd imagine because if her, if her body weight is there's such a different certain lifts certain lifts we don't have much grace like it's got to click or it doesn't work right so right. um we have to make sure our, our timing and our we're in sync on everything or else it's a lot of work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And are you now, I mean, it, it appears that you lift everything in the gym. Are you, <laughs> are you doing even more now to try and compensate for some of those, you know, those um, changes and tweaks? My workouts always change periodically, uh, but I've kind of developed a, a workout right now that seems to be working for me. My body is adapted well to it and uh, I feel strong and I feel comfortable with the movement and it seems to be helping on the ice so uh, yeah I like to challenge myself and whatever I'm doing I like to push it a little further but sure. as the season starts it's obviously going to go more into a maintenance phase okay is it is, is that more difficult as you enter into your 30s or settle into actually no the strength stuff I like I, I've always been really into the gym and uh, the, the the fitness side of being an athlete is something that I really that I really enjoy learning about and uh, developing and you know even the the cardio the physiology the heart rate zones the the recovery stuff I find it very interesting so for me it's always something that I love doing okay in the last couple of seasons injuries have been common amongst many of the top pairs you both seem injury free or have been injury free we lie okay <laughs> <laughs> so what are your injuries this is this is actually my first summer injury free and Three years, knock on wood. Really? Yeah. Uh, last year was probably my hardest year I've ever had. I had a, a tear in my hip from around nationals, and it lasted until October. I didn't actually do a full run through of either program from four continents to worlds. My first full run was at worlds in the competition. Really? In yeah. Helsinki? Yeah. No, 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 in Boston. In Boston, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I tore the fascia um, like over my great trochanter there and every time of I'd, course yeah where your where your <laughs> right, femur yeah. kind of pokes out when you pop okay. your hip out with sass right, yeah. right there right. <laughs> uh, Got it. so every time I'd bend my knee or land a jump it would 
the bone would push on the tear. Oh. So it was exceptionally painful. I had, you know, cortisone injections. Um, and then in May of last year, I had a hernia repair surgery. And then I had a PRP injection into my hip the next day. So I was just kind of like lying there for a couple of weeks trying to recover. Right. And it was my first surgery ever. Right. So it was, it was an interesting summer. It was catch up and it was trying to get back to the shape that I'm used to feeling because mm -hmm. I've never had an injury set me back quite that much. And it was also also an interesting end of the season last season, being a, having to kind of dig deep and trust my years of experience without feeling comfortable in my jumps at all. Because I didn't I didn't do a triple jump in the run through for like six right. weeks. Uh, so last year was we really started hitting stride later in the season, I think, okay. and uh, it followed into this year a lot smoother. Um, my weight fluctuated less because of being able to train uh, more consistently. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been nice, <laughs> you know. I, I, Eric and I always talk about like once you hit thirty, <laughs> it's like there's something that happens, and just everything hurts more every single day. Right, right. It's like your body complains to you, like, "Are you still doing this to me? <laughs> yeah, right. What is wrong with you? I've <laughs> given you, you everything I've right. got. What Why are you, are you doing? Yeah. Skates, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Well, like you lace up your skates and then you go to stand up, and it's like you don't stand up without a groan. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but once I get going on the ice, I, I actually feel. I think in some ways better than ever. I just, I, I understand the sport more and more. I understand my body more and more. And just the ability to, you know, the, to understand my biomechanics and to move in a more efficient way and to apply my energy where is needed as opposed to just like, you know, pedal to the metal the whole way through a program. Mm -hmm. Heading into this Olympic season, how much would it mean to you, Luba, knowing that Dylan has been an Olympian and even won, you know, a silver medal, a team event, how much does it would it mean to you to to go to the Olympics on behalf of Canada? Oh, it, it's I probably don't realize everything right now, but it's something very big and it's my dream, which will come true <laughs> with a work, of course. Um, but Dylan is helping me a lot in terms of putting out all the potential stressors and what we can experience at the Olympics and heading up to Olympic season. Um, so I kind of have a guide mm -hmm. for it, which makes the process easier. What are some of the stressors that, that you're aware of now that Dylan has sort of helped identify? It's just it's more intense year and everyone's trying hard to do their best and we are in the mix and we have to try one harder to be to achieve our goal. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, as a great as your season was last year, no, is there now a greater sense of expectation that you're on that, you're in that pot, that pack that's on the cusp of, you know, breaking in even further and getting onto the podium? Does that motivate you? Does that feel like stress? A little bit of both, but the more I think every single athlete says, the more you focus on the scores and the numbers, it's um, it's not the right mindset. You better focus on yourself and compete against yourself against your own results, against your own... Um, Personal best. So. Yeah, and quality of the elements on every single practice about um, compete against your own quality. I think also the way we look at it is, yeah, we were, we were close. We're pushing that threshold of breaking into that top group and hitting the podium. But the pair world is also kind of at this new level of depth that I, I've never seen. And so we recognize that while we placed here, there's also just as many teams that were just behind us. Sure. And I think the pool is enormous and it's going to be, you know, for the viewer, it's going to be a very exciting year for Paris, for all disciplines, actually. I think it's going to be a very exciting Olympic season. And I know from experience and just how the sport works, everyone's going to step up their game Olympic year. Some will step it up too much and get injured. And that's just the nature of an Olympic year. Mm -hmm. Part of the game is being able to stay just below that level and make sure that you ride in healthy. Right. But everyone's going to be gunning for that top three spot, and there's probably like up to 10 teams that have a shot at it, which sure. is incredible. Sure. Um, so we just have to, like Luba said, focus on ourselves and keep bettering ourselves as a team and making sure that our improvements are being made where necessary and hope that the chips land where they are supposed to fall. Mm -hmm. so talk that's, what, that's what I mean. He guides me through the season. He right. <laughs> yeah. outlined all those things. Totally. I already feel calm going into the Olympics. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Dylan's working. Uh, I mean, when you talk about teams upping their game, are you thinking about upping your game in, in 
in any way? And if so, can you share with us what that might look like? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're practicing the throw quad sow. It's choreographed into the free program. Uh, we have a throw quad Lutz from previous years. That's kind of been on the back burner. Uh, we figured strategically seeing us the throw triple us is our short program throw. And it's an important throw for us in the long point wise. Mm -hmm. It can, the quad can tend to, it, it tends to mess with the timing of the triple. Mm -hmm. So we started working on the sow, which is a new throw for Luba. Mm -hmm. um, but it's come along very nicely. We've already landed quite a few. And uh, we're confident that we're going to be putting it in the program, hopefully by our first international event. Okay. How does it, how does it feel to land the quad? <laughs> yeah, how does it feel? It I want to know. <laughs> When I do it right, it's not a big deal. It feels it feels very free and such a great feeling of of um, flight and mm. height and speed. And it's not hard to land when it's right, or like when it's straight and aligned. Aligned. Mm -hmm. When um, it's a little bit off, it's like it a lot is, of force. Yeah, a lot of force. Right, right. Which I consciously thought before that the quad is a quad. I have to force it. I have to try harder. I have to push. But apparently, I have to do just double double. Two doubles. <laughs> right, right. Fair. Double double. The Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. Now, did, I mean, knowing that you're such good friends with Eric Radford, do you talk to Eric or Megan about the throw quad? Given it's you know it's something that they do for any advice or insights or. Does that just come from your own team? That's from our own team. Okay. Um, Luba has landed throw quad lutz numerous times, so I think the sow is an even easier transition, being okay. the nature of the takeoff, it's easier to adjust in the air. Mm -hmm. And at the same point, I, I've never used throw sow uh, in my career, and I've learned it as the new element, which we were aiming for four. So it's like, for me, it's this element only exists this way. Okay. So it's kind of easier way to look at. So, so did you start with like a single sow cow and then a double sow cow? Yeah, Cause, cause you yeah we just, we built it, we okay. built it right from the ground up. Right, right, okay. Tell us about, I mean, we've seen some, some, your short program is now sort of out in the public. It's, right. it's been viewed. Tell us about, you know, the choice of music and, and the dynamic and, and the choreography. We, like, like I said before, we all agreed for uh, with those choices. With the that was, that was David's idea. Yeah, it was David's idea, and we all agreed. I, for me personally, this kind of style is um, easier, and it's more natural. It's like Sharper. strong and mm -hmm. force and sharp. Easier to get. Luba's into tough style. woman. Yes. <laughs> Well, when the, when the program starts and the two of you weave amongst each other, it already gets exciting. And then when you land the throw and you kick, you just have the sense of like, oh, huge power and speed and confidence in, in that. Oh, well, fake it until you make it. <laughs> so you don't actually feel it. <laughs> I, I started feeling more. Because yeah. at the beginning, the, the kick that you're talking about, when I land my throw mm -hmm. and uh, there's still the music, I'm like, I need to move. And I need to <laughs> yeah, yeah, do yeah. something, right. uh, and which was wrong. Right now, I just hold the landing and take my moment, and mm -hmm. then kick comes on the board. Right, right, right. It's excellent. I mean, I got I got goosebumps on it. So <laughs> you're faking it well. You're faking it. Well. No, well, I'm just, making, it, was making it. it was a process. It was a process. Already <laughs> making it more than faking. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun to choreograph that program. Um, I mean, it's a, an iconic song. So mm -hmm. it was, I was really interested to see what David and Mary France had in mind and how it all came out. But they're so much fun to work with together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it came together quite quickly, actually. Okay. Yeah, it's just under, under a week, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And how does that work? Do you go to Montreal? Does Marie France come here? No, Marie came here. Okay. okay. Yeah. But and during the season, of, like last year, maybe this year again, we, we had a few travels to Montreal to like touch up on the, mm -hmm. on the program. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see her at some yeah. point. Okay. And your long program, has that been announced yet? Uh, it's been announced, right? I think so. Well, we're skating. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. We're skating to At This Moment um, okay. by Billy Vera and the Beaters. It's a song from the 80s. Um, David had been throwing it around for some other skaters, I think. And then he just had this light bulb moment and was like, I'm going to play it for you guys. And it's different. Uh, and at first we were like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then it, it kind of grew on us. And 
as him and Sandra listened to it together, they both just got super excited. And when your choreographers are excited about a piece of music like that, you just kind of, you, you nod and just let them go right. because mm. they're both brilliant, brilliant um, choreographers and they have incredible ideas. And when they're together, it's, you know, twice as good. And um, the program took a long time, but for good reason. And I really, I really think this free program is probably our best work yet as a team. Not to build it up too much, but it, it feels like a step up even from last year's long, and it's got a new maturity and um, a realness to it that I, I think we haven't yet fully tapped into with other programs. And I think as this program develops over the season, it's going to become more and more special. It, it definitely feels like it's something unique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I've noticed in terms of your uh, competitive track record and scheduled events for this season, you haven't skated in Russia. And is that is that intentional? Is that just serendipitous? Would we don't want them to steal her back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to protect her. <laughs> I keep her in the suitcase when, right, right, when right, the Russians right. are around as a roller around. <laughs> I mean, do you feel welcome if you were to go back to Russia as a, you know, to compete as a pair? What's the decision behind that? I never thought about it. And I think it's just the lack of draw that we didn't get the Russian Grand Prix. Okay. And there hasn't been many events in Russia over the last few years. Yeah, you know, true. just the uh, uh, Russ Elecom Cup and right. that's it. So oh, they, they have Challenger right now. Okay. Since last year. But like not, not like there hasn't been, uh, you know, a Grand Prix final or a Worlds or something right. there that we would end up at. Sure. Does the thought of Russia, competing in Russia, excite you or concern you? Well, we do can do it. So it's just another competition and we do our routine. That's what we can do. Right. And honestly, I think, I think um, Luba would be very well received. I think we would be well received, but I think Luba would be very well received. You know, uh, online, a lot of the, the fans are very supportive and even the Russian commentators are very supportive of Luba and us so I think uh, it would be quite positive. Okay, okay. Has, has the, the sort of response to your shift to skating for Canada and skating with a Canadian partner and seeking Canadian citizenship, has that been well received by you know the skating community in Russia or are there some who are not as crazy about the decisions that you've made? Um, skating community, you mean oddly in particular, or everybody? Like, I guess officials, the whole other skaters, Russian skating judges, even fans, I suppose. Well, you know, as many people, as many opinions. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking all the Russian Skating Federation for everything that I've had in there. And same, thanking them for understanding my choice. And um, that's a new page of my life. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone is allowed to do what they feel better for them. Yeah, I, I feel, and I feel so. like there's definitely a positive response from from the Russian skaters and the community. You know, everyone sure. always comes up and talks to Luba at competitions, and they're always asking her how things are, and they're yeah. very supportive. And you know, I, I don't think there's any animosity or negative feelings towards the situation. Right, right. Yeah, and some we, we, some we, of the athletes are. Yeah, some of the athletes are talking to me and asking how things are there, how different the systems are, and how the training is going. So, no, nothing, nothing super negative. Mm -hmm. so, so, when you, I mean, you talked about the adaptation of the Russian approach to skating versus the Canadian approach. Have you now just fully adopted the Canadian approach, or do you bring some of your own Russian background to sort of? Be a bit of a blend, and and Dylan can take on some of this is how we do it in Russia, and it brings about you know benefits and and, and positive results. Um, and on the positive side, I use some fire that I used to uh, that I had in Russia to like get myself going. Right. Um, what are you saying? We don't have fire here in Canada. What are you? I mean, I'm using my. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and Dylan, sometimes, sometimes it's too much, and Dylan keeps me on the leash. That Luba, calm down. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Um, when you think about pacing for this Olympic season, is it on your agenda to or on your goal list to make the Grand Prix final? Yes. Yeah. It is, even though that's yet another competition to tie yourself in. But you're cool with that. We train to be ready for much more than what's needed in one competition, right? Okay. So we're competitive athletes. This is our job, and uh, there's a nice chunk of break between the Grand Prix Final and Nationals, and that it would definitely be a huge, hugely beneficial experience for us to be able to go to the Grand Prix Final and 
be amongst the top six teams in the world leading into the second half of the season. Mm -hmm. It's definitely on our goal list. Okay. Additional question about pacing. The team event, which was introduced in Sochi in 2014, you, of course, Dylan, competed in that. What are your feelings about, you know, maybe this is a better question to ask you once you've retired from skating, but, you know, maybe you can't speak as openly, but it, it, does it help? Were you glad to skate I loved it. three times? Were you tired by the time you got to the individual event? No. No, I okay. loved it. Okay. I, it. I like I, I I don't know personally I I believe that as an athlete you should train hard you know and you, you there's other sports where they have to compete ten times more than we do and they have to recover and bounce back and do it and I think right. you know in any given training week you should be able to do more than three run throughs mm -hmm. so and plus it's the Olympic Games if you're not at your physical peak what are you doing right. it is challenging but we also prepared for it. And I think this time around would be the same. We are definitely hoping to be asked to be part of that team, and we will train accordingly for right. sure. Does the schedule sort of advantage or benefit the Paris teams that there's more likely that two teams on you know two Paris teams for Canada definitely. would swap in and out because the event is? I know, think that's Paris likely. Individual? I think okay. that's likely. Okay. Uh, I can't say what they're going to do, and they haven't sure. told us, and I don't think they know, but. You know that that's that is a likely situation, and I think that is definitely beneficial for the pairs. Mm -hmm. On the on the flip side, for example, I was speaking recently with the Kinnearms, the American pairs team, uh, and the U.S. has one spot. There's I one know. pair that will go for the U.S. So the Kinnearms said, if we make that team, would we love to skate four times at the Olympics? You bet, without question. So <laughs> it's interesting because right? I really would have thought pairs would any skater would want to sort of pace themselves, but no. It's you know, just, there's something there special about going. being on Olympic ice. You know, it sounds cliche, but when you're in the middle of your program and you look down and you're skating over the Olympic rings, it's like, it's like you can't experience that anywhere else ever mm -hmm. in life. And mm -hmm. uh, to get another two opportunities to do that, for sure. Absolutely. Right. right. I, I mean, I wouldn't turn it down. Right. Okay. In Canada, what are the citizenship requirements to compete on behalf of Canada, if there are many? And have you met those, Luba? Well, it's an ISU rule that you have to be a citizen of, of the country that you represent. No, that's uh, Olympic, the IOC rules. IOC rule, okay. Yeah. But what do you mean Canadian requirements? So are, are you a Canadian citizen yet? Is that something you're working towards? I'm working towards it and it's going to... Okay. We're um, close. She's got her permanent residency. Okay. Um, and we're confident about that we will be on time. <laughs> okay, excellent. Fingers crossed that. Fingers crossed. When you're at events, uh, you know, I think about the Canadian National Championships. When you're warming up, for example, you're sharing ice with your best friend, Eric, you know, on ice. I don't know how that sort of works if you're chumming with each other or if it's all a competition. You're sharing ice with your former partner. Is that, is, is that awkward or difficult? I think fans are always curious. Or are you completely in the zone and, and not distracted by it? I'm personally more of a relaxed kind of mentality. Like, I, I balance intensity with... Uh, feeling relaxed pretty well right. and you know I'll, I'll be skating around the ice on a practice or a warm-up and I'll crack a joke with Eric like we'll be doing our stroking warm-up side by side laughing about something and um, when I see them do something well I clap okay. you know I mean I'm very Canadian <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he you know I, I love Eric he's 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 my best friend um, and then I've got Bryce on the other side of the boards who's my other best friend it's really quite mm -hmm. fun when they're all right there it's like a hangout <laughs> right. but I, I really do want him to have his best experience, and I know he feels the same about me, and we've gotten better and better at that over the years, and we've been skating against each other for basically half our lives, and, you know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I, uh, I think our friendship will last our lifetime, and skating is skating, and uh, I think I, we both feel lucky that we get to experience it together, and the results are not up to us. Mm -hmm. So we both go out there, we do the best we can, we try and make our country proud, and hopefully the judges appreciate both of our efforts. Sure. And I'm, I'm amazed how Dylan and Eric are, uh, how they keep uh, their friendship throughout the whole competitive career. Um, this is a part of Canadian mentality, and I'm more into it. Uh, I'm personally very um, isolated person, especially at the competition. I have to get into my own zone, and I cannot be goofing around with the other people okay. it's so distracting for me like leave me alone until i'm done and then i'm opened and okay. dylan is very opposite okay. uh, so i <laughs> and i really appreciate how they handle their friendship 
knowing that they are competitive athletes and they're competing against each other. So I like, I think Eric I'm and I also, clapping for it. Eric and I also kind of just accepted early on that our skating fates are intertwined. Like we were, we've been neck to neck neck uh neck and neck in like every event junior men we were one and two junior pairs we were one and two senior men 14th 15th like our first senior international we are seventh and eighth like we've okay. just we've been third and fourth at worlds twice we are sixth and seventh this year at worlds like yeah. we've just been for the better part of our careers right there with each other yeah even so that far i couldn't i couldn't handle it probably i wouldn't be able to handle it <laughs> See? Like, you know so it, far, like i said we did, it's taken time i mean when we were younger it was a little harder um uh, there were times we'd finish an event and you know we'd not see each other for a couple of days and like it would just be more of a space thing and then over time we just got to the point that we'll room together even if we know we're neck and neck going in right and, and right we just kind of say even like even as adults like knowing think? at certain times that it was just that guy it was your it was your best friend who's the the one between you and gold you can still be cool with that he's out there to do his job he's you know like good for him he worked hard he did his job and on the day he executed i executed and the people with the power decided that that one was better then you know what i got to go back and do my job a little better right. and this sport isn't you know we're not boxing we're not like mm -hmm. face to face we're we're performing and our performance is judged by a panel of people and their subjective opinion essentially decides the end result and that's not for me to decide sure. my job is to go out there and do the best that i can and everyone else out there do, does the same and so I just focus on that because you know like it's easy it's easy to get catty it is when you care this much about you put your whole life into it it's very easy to get emotionally engaged with what's happening and um, our friendship is important mm -hmm. and uh, it's actually much more enjoyable to experience being a team this way which is why the team event in Sochi was so much fun because we got to cheer each other on instead mm -hmm. of like, yay, but not yay, yay, <laughs> but not yay. You know, like, yeah, right, yeah. So if you're at competition, at a Canadian competition with, you know, and Eric's part of the mix and Dylan and Eric sort of have their dynamic and their thing, are there times when you think, Dylan, like, let's keep this business, like, because you're trying to stay in your zone? Uh, or do you just as, let him as do much as it's not distracting for me, and Dylan knows when he, he refocuses quickly. And yeah. no, it's not distracting for me. Yeah. Like our job, our job is number one to me. Sure. Yeah, and that's what I feel, and I'm, I'm happy with it. Right. Right. Okay. And uh, mm, I wanted to say that um, it's more for me. I'm also discovering Canadian mentality, and being friendship with everybody and with your competitors. Mm -hmm. And during the Stars tour, it's really, it was I really got into it, and I felt when my competitors become my friends. And I really discovered a personality of Megan Duhamel, and I like her a lot. And it's very interesting for me that uh, aside of the skating, people are people. Mm -hmm. And they're truly supportive, and they're truly friendly. And we were sharing each other clothes, and she took me to yoga class, and we had a nice time together. Right, right. So, so it's something new for me to be open to, so and not to expect. Yeah. So in Russia, when you were competing for Russia, was it were you discouraged from hanging out or being friendly with competitors, or was it just sort of you just sort of knew it, like you just sort of needed to keep? Like, were you told not to? No, I wasn't told not to. Mm, maybe it's part of me, and um, I don't know. This is the way it is there. I know that I wouldn't put it for everybody. That's what it's just how I was. I was not hanging out much with my okay. competitors. Okay. Uh, last question. I know you've talked about your goals for this, you know, this coming season. Montreal, Canada, of course, is hosting the World Championships in 2020. Is there the chance that you would think of an additional, maybe even just two years at the end of this Olympics or even another full Olympic quadrant? Uh, we can retire and come back. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like they'd have to wheel me onto the ice by then, you know? Like, uh, I, I think, you know, we both kind of agree that we, we do the Olympic cycle together and um, we're both excited about seeing what comes next for us and we'd really enjoy having some sort of a professional career together and performing and okay. uh, enjoying that side of skating. I think we definitely have something to offer to the the show skating world, especially Luba with her flexibility and creativity, I think. And Dylan with his strength. Thank you. Um, I think we could 
you know, do some interesting things and really enjoy that aspect of our skating. And I but think when you learned where we're at that right Montreal now. was hosting the World Championships, was there is there a part of me that's like? Hmm. There's a part of me that, <laughs> that goes, aw, shucks. Be, that could be really fun. <laughs> I'm sure it will be great. And I, I was lucky enough to compete at Lon uh, the London Nationals in 2013. And mm -hmm. competing at home is unbelievable. It's mm -hmm. so much fun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would definitely be an experience worth having. But there are young athletes that are very deserving. And we have a really strong contingency of young pairs coming up. And I, I can see they're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Sure. And um, I think we have to be realistic with our goals and we have to be honest with ourselves with what we want and for our futures and I think uh, so 100% certainty this is your last season yeah okay all right well I hope it's a great one great to talk it will be you. it's going to be yes the, quad, the quads that you have working on uh, your continued choreography and dynamic on ice uh, I'm excited to see what you know how this next season unfolds as I'm sure our viewers are and best of luck to both of you and congratulations on an amazing season last year. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. All right, thanks.